Good morning. Pastor Sean here, and thank you for starting off your week with our morning prayer. So this is uh, Monday, June 15th, and let us begin. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Give glory to God, our light and our life. O come, let us worship him. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth. The heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hand formed the dry land. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God. And we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Give glory to God, our light and our life. O come, let us worship him. Our text for today is John 15, verses 12 through 27. And Jesus said, This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this that someone lays down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for the servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends, for that I have heard from my father. I, for, for all that that I have heard from my father, I have made known to you. You didn't choose me, but I chose you, and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit should abide, so that whatever you ask the father in my name, he may give it to you. These things I command you, so that you will love one another. If the world hates you, know that it has hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love you as its own. But because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute me. you. If they, if they kept my word, they will also keep yours. But all these things they will do to you on account of my name, because they do not know him who sent me. If I had not come and spoken to them, they would not have been guilty of sin, but now they have no excuse for this sin. Whoever hates me hates my father also. If I had done if I had not done among them the works that no one else did, they would not be guilty of sin. But now they have seen and hated both me and my father. But the word that is written in their law must be fulfilled. They hated me without a cause. But when the Helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will bear witness about me. And you will also bear witness, because you have been with me from the beginning. In many and various ways God spoke to his people of old by the prophets, but now in these last days he has spoken to us by his Son. All right, so in this text that we have today, I definitely would zero in on verses 18 and 19. If the world hates you, know that it has hated me before it hated you. If you are of the world, the world would love you as its own. But because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. All right, so the the issue for, um, not the issue, but one of the issues for us Christians is we need to always be thinking about our actions, about our words, even our thoughts, and asking ourselves, Am I thinking this? Am I seeing, or am I doing this? Am I saying this? Because I know that it will be accepted. You know, my my the people around me will will receive it and be like, oh yeah, cool, awesome, we like that. Um, am I doing it to get approval from the world, or is what I'm doing true? You know, is it conforms to exactly what Jesus has said, and therefore might put me at odds with the world. And this is, this is the thing that we always must be careful of because it's too easy for us to want to seek approval, you know, to only speak the things that we know um, are going to be inoffensive, that people will have no issue with. You know, well, we want to share God's word in so much as people will receive it. And so we, we know, you know what people want to hear and don't want to hear. <laughs> So we like to pick and choose parts of Jesus' message and, and emphasize the ones that won't get us in trouble, the you know the non-controversial things. 
but the thing is, you know, it's it's just <laughs> we we have to come to grips with the with the idea that you know if if we really hold firm to this, the world will hate us. You know, and it's just not even like well, the world won't like us very much. No, the world will hate us. Um, and you know, we think like well, but it's the the gospel is just it's a message of love. You know, who who can. Who, who has issue with that? You know, Jesus says, love your neighbor as yourself. Serve your neighbor. Take care of the less fortunate. Um, you know, we, we often hear non-Christians point to Scripture all the time and say, well, why, you know, this look at this. You should be doing this and look at that. Isn't that how you're supposed to be? Kind of to um, point, point these th things out, usually to uh, kind of throw them in our face when we're not doing these things. But, um, you know, Jesus wasn't crucified because he was telling people to be nice to each other. Um, you know, of course, people wouldn't have issues with <laughs> with the with that. Well, some people actually would, but uh, by and large, you know, saying love one another is, is not um, going to be met with too much consternation, I guess. But the thing is, you know, God or Jesus placed himself as God. You know, that's what the Pharisees saw, and that's what they they rebelled against. Of course, Jesus is God, um, but he also claimed to speak the truth, to be able to absolve sins, to call out the sins of others, um, to call, call out people for their hypocrisy, um, all this stuff. So that's, you know, that is also part of Jesus' message, and that's where we don't like to go. <laughs> we don't want to call out people on account of their sin because, you know, well, we don't want to judge because, you know, what it says judge not. Well, that's not exactly what it says. I mean, it's what it says, not what it means. <laughs> not that you cannot judge anybody. Um, that's all. That's another morning prayer. But the idea is, uh, you know, we are to call out sin. We are to call people to repentance. See, and, and the whole thing, like, if we're going to call people to repentance, that means they have to recognize that they are sinners and feel bad about that <laughs> so that they want to turn to Jesus because they can't deal with their own sin. So, um, you know, that's, that's our challenge, um, because we, we want to be accepted. We want to be loved. We don't want the world to hate us. We don't want them to cut us out and marginalize us because, you know, no, nobody likes that. Um, and so too, too often we're willing to, um, kind of neuter the message, neuter the gospel, essentially, um, well, the whole message of Christ, to only the things that we know are palatable to the world. And uh, that's, that's a dangerous place to be because, um, you know, once you start excising little bits and pieces out of God's word, well, you're, you're basically saying that his word's not good enough for, you know, for sharing <laughs> for, for other people. That's, that's not a good place to be. But, um, yeah, it's, it's a constant, constant thing. We always have to be vigilant of, um, as a pastor. I mean, this is always a thing, you know, I, I want people to, to come and hear the message, but you know, you, you don't want to turn people off. And uh, as I don't really, not that concerned about that, <laughs> about turning people off. I mean, as a pastor, I, I, I lean on the truth of God's word. So, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that if somebody is, upset with a message, they, they would come to me and we can discuss it. But, um, you know, the, the temptation is with all of us to, um, look at things, to, to think about things in, in such a way that the world would love us. So that way that would inform how we speak and, and what we do, uh, because we want the world to see us and say, Oh, you're a Christian. And they want us, or we want them to see us doing and, and saying and thinking and saying, oh, wow, I, I like that. I want to be a part of that. But see, Jesus even says, the reality is the world will hate you on account of me. Um, so it definitely makes you think. <laughs> like, am, am I trying to appeal? <laughs> now, we, sh you know, we shouldn't try to bring hate upon us. You know, we should always be speaking the truth and love. But um, even still, Jesus says, the world will hate you be on account of me. So, uh, something to think about, certainly something throughout this whole week, even to kind of run that through your filter. Why am I saying this? Why am I doing this? Why am I thinking this? Does it conform to the world or to Jesus? So there's your challenge. Let us pray. <laughs>
O Lord, our Heavenly Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all of our doings being ordered by your governance may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting in his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty, merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. All right. Well, again, thank you for joining me today and uh, hope uh, your week starts off on the right step and uh, peace be with you.